This is a discussion I'm looking forward to, being a train enthusiast. Joining us now to discuss their design of hyperspeed vertical train hubs are UK-based designers Christopher Christoffi and Lucas Matharasa. I thought the African names were difficult, <laughs> Lucas and uh, Christopher, but uh, boy, okay, I got through that okay. <laughs> Christopher, shall we start with you? Vertical trains. Now, I, I mean, we have innovation in gadgets that we hold in our hands, sure. but vertical trains? Um, I think, uh, obviously, we see train travel as, as the future of public transport. I mean, our, our project itself is set in 2075. Um, the idea was to look to the possible challenges that cities will ultimately face by 2075 um, and we felt those challenges of population increases, uh, land issues, um, significant pressures on sustainability, our project almost looked at challenging those issues and we felt that if you take essentially the land mass that current traditional train stations hold currently and the impact that they have on cities, w our idea was um, simply to literally just flip that vertically which will free up a significant amount of land within the city. So the train comes along and then, and then we'll goes up we'll like we'll against we'll a building. Yeah. yeah. Lucas? Exactly there. Oh, the, the, okay, you will me imagine yourself hanging like this on the, on the train, All but no. Falling out. <laughs> falling out. <laughs> but that, that's not the case. We have been uh, redesigned the carriage, so it's a cubicle shape, mm. and uh, so it works in vertical position and horizontal position in the same way, and it imitates the, the concept of the Ferris wheel, so, oh. so the, carriage, the carriages have uh, the tracks on both sides, and it pivots, uh, oh. there's a pivoting system. So you, you swing in the train <laughs> when it comes to a standstill? You probably, I mean, you won't notice anything. So then you get out like from a lift? Y yeah, it's correct. So effectively, each, the, the, the other significant difference between current train station design and, and ours as well is that the, 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 the tracks themselves will be, will be supported on the side rather than beneath. Hmm. So that allows the connectivity from the carriage into the tower. Well, let's have a look here. This is uh, information, uh, visual information sure, that you've supplied, sure. Lucas. So what is, what, uh, what's happening there? Well, that's, that's, exactly that's, that's a view from the park that, I mean, when you free that land mm -hmm. that, normal, uh, that current train stations use, uh, we propose to replace that for a park, mm -hmm. um, and that's the view from the park towards the, the, the tower. Mm. There's another one further away, right? That's, yep. yeah. Yep. And there, what, what's that telling us? So ultimately, we, we, we see this train station as repeatable pieces of infrastructure that can be supported in any city around the world. And what was key to us as well, that they become recognisable pieces of infrastructure, because what we're proposing is ultimately a network of hyperspeed tracks that can link mm. to every city. Mm. So essentially what you were seeing there was, was that significant in London, but you can put it in New York, for example, or Madrid. And okay, and I, I have to pause it here. It's very course. exciting, but I, you know, who are you, you guys? You know, where <laughs> do you come from and what's your expertise in that? Uh, sounds very exciting. You've done yeah. a lot of work on it, uh, Lucas. Yeah. Well, we, we met three years ago. Uh, working in uh, um, in a uh, architectural practice mm. in London, and we suddenly discovered that we have this common interest in in futuristic ways of transport, and and so we we, we joined to to submit this uh, project to our mm. Evolo competition, which is a, a okay. American magazine, and um, and so 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 we did very well there. Mm. So what you won the competition or what? It, it, we received a, received an honourable mention. Mm. Um, effectively, the competition itself asked you to challenge uh, the futuristic vertical structures in, in mm. architecture and design. So I think in terms of the probably the reason why we've received so much positive feedback is probably because the issue is quite current. Mm. Um, in engineering terms, uh, you're there. You, you got your honourable mention uh, in in the competition. Yeah. Uh, what's the uh, picture on the right telling us there with those arrows coming out? So the, the picture on the right there is this effectively describing two things. It's the entrance into the base of the tower, so public circulation with people, but also yeah. how the trains, when they travel down, and they will, they will connect to a series of underground networks, and the trains will travel um, mm. through the underground and then effectively take to, to an overground network. And what you're seeing here is actually the kinetic facade, which we mm. call. So um, the beauty of the tower itself would be it almost reflects uh, the, the, the busyness of, of each city, so you'll be able to see the trains coming up and down. Now, how, how will they stick to the wall? I mean, are we look talking magnetism here, or how's it going to work? I think it will be a combination of, of magnetism, of course, because I think we, the maglev uh, technology is the future of trains, mm -hmm. but then, uh, of course, when, when it's docked, 
has to be some kind of mechanism that holds it there. Otherwise, it will fall off yeah, the building. So you're both architects. Yes, That's correct. Probably. Right. Now, a couple of the other things that you've got in your information, you talk about high, the high-speed aspect. Sure. I'm very skeptical of high-speed in uh, South Africa because of we, we're, we're up high, and yep. there's an escarpment where we, I don't know how well you know the geography of the country, yep. but it goes down to the sea and, for example, on to, to the Natal coast on, sure. on the uh, east coast. There's a large drop which is why we have a narrow gauge railway line in South Africa okay. to get around all the curves. Yeah, sure. And if you were to build a conventional high speed thing, it'd probably break the national budget on its own. Of course. So now what's your view on high speed? Um, I think we, we, we do see high speed as the future of public transportation. I think um, when you look at issues with fuel, for example, um, we see as it, it is almost the alternative, the only alternative to sustainable travel for, in, for public transportation. I mean, uh, for example, they're, they're trying to introduce uh, high-speed rail for, for, for the UK at the moment. Mm. Um, I think a lot of controversy a there. A lot of controversy, but I almost think it will encourage the economic growth of, of the mm. cities and, and the country mm. itself. So maybe, hopefully, the, fit, the, the kind of the... Of course, the trouble with Britain is that if you want to do anything, you either have to break something down and <laughs> put something else in its place, because they haven't got much space. Agreed. Or there's contested heritage land, or that, so there's no space. We, on the other hand, do have space. Are you saying that uh, down the line we won't, and do we, we need to look at this sort of technology? I think, uh, yeah, the, the idea is not to make the same mistakes that we did mm. in the in back in the in the days. So, so yeah, you could co you could look at this mm. concept as as. Now as you've been at the, the reason you're here is my colleague Nozipo Mbanjwa was at the Africa Rail conference sure. uh, yesterday and today, and you did a, this presentation at the conference, did you? We did. We How did, did it go down? Uh, we th we thought we received received quite a positive feedback. Mm -hmm. I mean, naturally, with with the project, there's always skeptics, but obviously, you always see people who are quite encouraged that. That some of us are beginning to challenge mm. the future of, 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 of train travel, really. Mm -hmm. And I think if we're going to challenge it, probably now's the, now's the time to begin. So, to what, what happens next with a project like this? You're talking about 2075, so right. people say, well, we've got a bit of time yeah. before <laughs> that happens. But now, what happens? Is this you won an award, now you go back to your normal work, or do you try and get funding and w develop this? We're probably going to go back to our normal work and keep this as a uh, personal thing, and uh, and let's see where we go to. I and mean, has anyone expressed interest in developing this further? A lot of interest, but not nothing, uh, um, nothing really dead set at yeah. the moment. I have to ask, what your next project's going to be? Th that's uh, that's th that's a secret. That one. <laughs> oh, right. <laughs> okay. I'm just thinking it would be something uh, counterintuitive, like spaceships, rockets that don't go up but go sideways. Sideways. <laughs> <laughs> maybe you can be, you know, maybe you can work on that. Eh? <laughs> <laughs> That'll get you there faster than a speed <laughs> train. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Well, thanks to designers Christopher Christoffi and Luca Matarasa.